Hello from the yarn closet. I am doing my what seems to be a regular Thursday podcast. Today is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of acquisitions and mom, I just told you I was podcasting. Stop texting me. I can take my own kids home from school on our little scooters. We'll be fine. Um, So yeah, today is fun day, fun day. Last Saturday, we drew a name, C.W. Harton, 85, on Ravelry. I emailed her through Ravelry, asked that she get a hold of me. So I'm going to hold her prize um, for two weeks. And the next giveaway drawing will be on 11-25. Four, I believe that is a Saturday. I think I'm going to get in the routine of Thursday podcasts and Saturday drawings just for some fun. Um, and as you noticed, I have moved around my space again because I got this tall table for my um, sock machine. And then on the other side, since it's very long, it actually goes completely out of the picture. I'm going to put the hat machine on the opposite side. And I want to be able to be cranking standing up because I think it's better um, for my posture, etc. And since I am standing up, I'm going to show you the crazy old lady thing. See this? You know that gap you get right here? The gap. Um, this belt pulls that gap in, snaps here, so you can go to the bathroom. You don't have to worry about your belt. And you have no belt gunk. But if you want, you can put this on and have a regular belt. Make it into a regular belt by attaching that to these little snap sides. Um, found it because I was thinking about my son. I have to get him bigger size jeans because of how tall he is, but he's so skinny that even though most of them have those elastics on the inside nowadays, um, it's still gappy. It's still crazy. Oh, and my hair is just dry, and blah. At least it's a nice color, right? So anyway, that's my really cool belt thing. Um, for any kind of special needs kids, elderly people who don't have dexterity, it is fabulous. I take these jeans off, I fold them up, I leave the belt on, and good to go. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, also in the cool thing arena, remember Laura Mates with an S design on Etsy? I got the clear plastic um, clear plastic bottom bag. It's great, total sweater quantity. I have like three projects in it right now. Um, I found for 10 bucks on Amazon, this clear plastic. You know what this is? They don't even call it a bag. They call it an insert for a tote bag. Oh my God. I totally love it. All the pockets, the see-through, love it. And then there was another one that also looked totally see-through and is absolutely not. Not at all. Not, not at all. Not at all. But it's still fun. Um, because as much as I love this, I can't always afford that. The 10 bucks really is cool. So I got those two bags for less than $15. Um, so that was totally fun. My belt in my bags this week and moving around. I got this table on sale 
Um, turns out I measured and the table came in two heights, counter and bar. I measured to counter and thought, perfect. And then I saw this other color, this lighter wood color. I thought, oh yeah, that's fine. I'll take that because that's extra 20 bucks off. It wasn't the color. It was because it was a bar height. So it's like six inches higher, four inches higher. I don't know. Forgot. Yarn Closet. I'm Laura. I'm in Tucson, Arizona. I am Yarn Closet Arizona, AZ, on Instagram and Ravelry. And I run the Yarn Closet group on Ravelry. If you subscribe here, comment here, if you become a member of the group in Ravelry and get active commenting, that's where I draw my prize winners. And I do that every two weeks, approximately. Or any excuse I have. Um, I love comments. I love it because I started this. People are like, what's your business? The Yarn Closet. I've been the Yarn Closet for years and years. I started that after my days of Looming Laura um, because I had a bad experience um, running an online business. And it was the Yarn Closet was just one-on-one -on -one instruction, group lessons, workshops, a lot of kid events, um, and finishing work, predominantly in crochet. I can loom knit, I can crochet, and I can knit. And for only knitting for a year, I'm halfway decent, and I'm legally blind. I think that sometimes makes me more motivated. <laughs> um, because I can't do all the hobbies that I used to love to do. I can't sit down and read half a dozen books in a week. Um, I just can't do it. So then you have to find other things. And I also found my, um, circular sock machine. It's a, uh, from Erlbacher Gerhardt. It's basically, a speedster but not a speedster every crank is one row of stitching mine it takes one and three quarter cranks so it's not as hard on your rotator cuff um, and that will be the same for the machine that'll go over here that will be my hat machine so this is sock and the hat machine is big enough for hats. You can make bags and Christmas stockings and teddy bears and whatever. So people have often asked me, you know, because I've been doing this about four months and I do a lot of giveaways. Well, you know, what's the business you're trying to promote? I'm trying to promote being a part of the community, the knitting community. I want to go to a couple of knitting retreats I may only be able to go to one a year, um, if that, but I want to do stuff so I can meet people and have some friends because I am legally blind. It's hard to make friendships. It's hard to, it's hard. I can't just go anywhere. I have an electric scooter, but I only feel comfortable driving it about a half mile. Um, so that's that. And in that vein, people have said, well, are you planning to start a Patreon? And some people have been very negative about it. You know, are you talking about your sick husband and your blindness and your bullied kid because you want to get people's money? No. No. Um. So the fat squirrel doesn't do commercials on YouTube because she has beliefs about commercials just generate negative feelings in us. I was watching regular TV with my son last night. Um, and a jewelry thing popped up and I'm like, oh, I don't have anything that nice. Well, I'm like, I get it. Yeah, because normally I don't watch TV. It's just not something I do anymore. Um, one of those things I kind of gave up. 
but I love to listen to podcasts and books on tape and um, and be active with my knitting and my crochet and my kids because I got kids and I got dogs and you know I work a job and I'm really just like everybody else so no I'm not doing this to try to make just money off of sympathy um, but it is getting expensive to keep going with the giveaways. Um, but we all have those skeins that we buy and they are lovely and they're wonderful, but they weren't what we expected. And sometimes you have that one skein and you just can't do the one skein project with it. So I see no point in keeping it. I'll send it on. And my um, dad, Ed, is my shipping sponsor and that is fabulous and i've also got a sponsorship from growly bear soaps she's getting me some hand balms and i have a number of chapsticks and some foot cream i use this everywhere so those are going out with the prizes and i've been using the circular sock machine to crank the sock tube because that's like a thing, and I think people should see what that is. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But if you get a skein of yarn cranked in a sock tube, you don't have to make socks out of it. You just unwind it like you would a sock blank. Um, but someone said, what about Etsy? And what about selling your sock tubes there or hat tubes or hats that you make or things you make with the new hat one? And I did a little research and I do think that I could make a little bit of profit on one skein of yarn if I made um, three to six hats out of it, whether they were double thick or single thick, they wouldn't be fancy fancy, but they'd be fingering weight, you know, Midas hat types. So I'm thinking about that. That's, that's something I'm thinking about. Um, I won't have the hat machine until around Christmas and I'll need time to jump in and my son is going to start homeschooling in January. Um, but my work schedule will change a little bit. And 2019 is the year of the sweater. So we'll see, but I might, I might think about that Etsy and see where that goes. I mean, I don't know what the fees associated with that are. I heard recently that they've gone up dramatically, but I may look into that. That might be a thing. But no, that's not why I started this. I just started this podcast because I like talking to you. I like the handful of people I've already met who I've communicated with, sent packages back and forth, sent long emails back and forth, and really made some friendships. That's what I want. So when I am the blind lady who shows up at the retreat, I might know a person or two um, or they might have a sense of me and, and engage with me. It's not always easy for me to engage with people. I don't always know if they're trying to catch my eye. I don't always know if I'm just barging in. And it sometimes just kind of stops me. Um, so that's why I started. I have a couple of catch lines. Um, one is thank you for participating. So I send those cards out. Um, and the other one that has come about throughout the podcast is look with your heart first, not your eyes. And I did this thing because I was ordering more cards. I did this thing called Promo Box through Vistaprint because I had a coupon and it was cheap. And they send you promotional items. Someone had to like check out my podcast to know the thing about look with your eyes first. So I got some neat little stickers. I got some neat little cards, 
pen, um, and a t-shirt. I mean, how fun is that? I don't know that I will continue to do this promo box because without the coupon, it's expensive. <laughs> um, and I let them just do whatever they wanted to do as far as branding. And if I do end up doing something to help offset the costs, I, um, I would want to be more consistent with branding, I think. Um, so, I wanted to share that with you though, because I know many of the other makers find it difficult to figure out the branding thing, and I certainly didn't put a lot of time or energy. Um, I had a sign I used last year, and I have white paper taped over the bottom where my phone number is, because I used it by classes I was doing last year. Um, So that's something that's happened this week that's gotten me kind of thinking. Um, I have podcast notes. So the big thing left to do is to go over a project that I'm getting paid for, a little baby blanket. And... Um, it's going to have a single, after I finish with the gray, it's going to have a single row of this pink, then a large chunk of white, then three more rows of this pink, similar to the size of the white strip. Um, to hopefully make it about the size that she wanted. She was very easy. Um, and I'm using up a bunch of my acrylic because it's a baby thing. And I have another order from my son's teacher. I made her a shawl. Quite lovely. The, my most favorite thing I've knit so far. And she wanted it out of black. I'm like, I, I can't knit black. I can't do black. First of all, my eyesight, people with good eyesight don't always do black. But I have some black and gray gradient yarns that I think I could work with. So... I'm going to pull that together, but she wants to pay me to make another one. I'm not entirely sure she understands how much the yarns cost. I think she understands the time involved, so I will probably just give her a flat rate and just not charge much for my labor because I like her and she's been good to my son. Um, so here is the beginning of sweater 2019. I totally didn't know what size I was using. I thought I was using a different size. I had the wrong size. Um, so this ribbing doesn't look quite the way I wanted it to. And then I totally messed up with my short rows for over the shoulder in the back. So that doesn't look great and it doesn't feel great. And I don't love this yarn, although I hope after washing that it softens quite a bit. Um, and certainly the, the purling side of those short rows is a little off. But, I mean, I, I think I'm pretty decent otherwise. And it certainly, I can get it over my head. It fits. It's a good color on me. If you can comment and you know what I'm actually knitting, I can't imagine you'd know. But if you can guess it, I'll send you a prize. So you'll get foot cream and you'll get a cranked sock tube. Yes, we talked last time about only half a sock tube. What I meant was like two different halves. Um, but for example, and you always get the braille tag with it, because I just think that's fun to share with people. And so C.W. Horton, this is one of the gifts that I've
told her she could have. I'm getting rid of all my books because I've never knitted or crocheted anything from them. Um, and then there's another one that is similar but crochet because I noticed on her Ravelry that she's mostly crochet. So here's the fun part. I posted on Instagram um, that Craftsy was having a sale and I've already gotten the yarn. I'm so excited. A lot of them were 50 grams, some of them were 100, but per skein I paid anywhere from 480 to 535 per skein. Um, someone said that my picture showed 1190. Well, they didn't read my comment, which was, that was for two skeins. So what did I get? Um, I'm not a yarn snob. I got two skeins of Croy Sock. I got two skeins of this, I think it's Camino Alpaca. It's Alpaca Nylon. And I got two skeins in this color and two skeins in this color. Um, and then I got two skeins of this color of Croy. Because I have kids and I still love that stuff. Then I got Cloudborn Highland Superwash Sock Twist hand painted. I got two skins of this and this is 50 grams, 178 yards. So the funny thing is it's, it's just got to be a heavier wool. I, you know that Highland so the feeling isn't as great now, but I'm pretty sure when you wash and dry it, it'll be fabulously fun. Um, same thing again in this lovely color. Um, I got two of these. This, I got two of these. I got two of everything that I got. So once again, this is the Superwash Polyamide Highland Superwash hand painted. Their colors are numbers. That's why I'm not saying them. <clears throat> I'm really excited to use this one. Really excited. Um, I love red and I love purple and I'm very excited to use this one I might incorporate this in that shawl for my teacher friend because it's got greens and purples grays and some black um, I already used a skein of this Heritage sock yarn, um, 7525 Merino Nylon, to make a cranked scarf for a friend. And I'm going to save this for a hat for her because she's already ordered. Um, so I'm putting that in my hat cubby. Then I got two skeins of this darker purple Cascade Heritage. I like the Cascade Heritage. I like the color consistency. I like the way that it feels when you work with it. I like the way that it washes up and blooms. Um, I'm not a fan of the Highlands. Yes, I got a lot of Highlands. I'm not a fan of them. They just don't feel as nice. I'm praying. Now I did wash one swatch and it felt much better after I washed it um, and blocked it for swatching. So I'm hoping that happens. I only bought one skein of this. I'm thinking heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, more of the Highland. I really like this purple. Um, oh, we 
wait, are the names on the front? The names are in the front. Why do they use a number? So the color on the tag says a number and a die lot number, and then they have a name on the front. Well, geez, I gotta go all the way through this again. Okay. I got ocean, 100 grams of ocean. I got 100 grams of dark teal. They look quite lovely together. Um, shale, Shayla, Shayla Heather. Got 100 grams of that. I may already have some of that. I got 100 grams of lavender heather. I really love the lavender heather. Um, one of the things I have noticed about theirs is they just tone-wise, they all seem to go really nicely. And then autumn heather. Yes, I like the heathers. Then I got the one skein of heritage. I'm pretty sure there's no name on here, but a color. 5616, this bright. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. 5603. I got two skeins of this. You know, that would make for a pretty decent pop. I got two skeins of this. That could be a three skein shawl. 5663. Um, okay, I, I'll tell you. So, for sweaters. Typically, four to six fingering skeins will do a sweater for me. Um, I'm usually small to medium in the style of sweaters that I like. Um, so that's nice. I mean, I'm lucky there. I'm 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 a little bit like uh, Christy Glass in that in that manner. Um, and the idea of mixing colors doesn't bother me in the least. Okay, so then what are the Highland Superwash? Ooh, this is called Strawberry Fields. I'm not telling my daughter she's allergic to strawberries. She'd never touch it. Or every time she'd touch it, she'd want Benadryl. This is Berry Basket. It's um, hot pink, and then this is like purple. I don't know if you can tell that. Um, oh my god, this one's art gallery. Green and dark purple and grays and black. What's this? Do I have another one of these? Downtown Days. Oh, so this is grays and red. Oh, I love that. I think we went over the 5632 in the heritage. Maybe we didn't. All right, let me see. Do these have colors? Do these have color names? Purple Haze Croy Sock. Purple Haze. M504. Camino Alpaca. Deep End. Deep End, Chrysok. M502. Yep, and I already showed these. So do you see this mound of massiveness? Um, Absolutely a great stock up, so we're good to go for a while. Um, and yes, I'm a nut for taking on two more paid projects the middle of November. Now, the baby blanket I'm going to have done um, probably next week. And then the shawl, I don't think I need it done until like after Christmas. She didn't say she wanted this for a Christmas present. And I think she realizes the amount of time. But it's fun. And then I started a sweater. 
and I still have a few socks that I need to finish, heels and toes. Um, and then I totally tried to put in a folded cuff on my solid red socks. Could not follow a straight line to save my life. So the big debate is, do I, it's just going to be too, too hard to redo it at this point. So I might add it into the gag gift for my aunt for her birthday, because they would fit her. Okay, go eat something now. Magnus is a stress eater. Um, that's everything. It always goes so much faster than you think. Um, once again, comment, subscribe. Tell me if you can figure out the sweater. I will give you a hint. It is a color work, non-traditional sweater that I am doing all in one color. Um, <clears throat> And I might also modify the, the sleeve length to three quarters, because um, I like that. And I'm not a huge fan of the yarn, um, although I think I will have plenty. I'm not sure if I should have just restarted when I realized that my shoulder short rows weren't going great. I mean, I figured my hair is going to cover it up because I don't think I can easily put in a lifeline and redo my collar because it was from the collar down. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I can. Maybe I can just, just do it. Um, It felt so good at the moment that I cast it on in the evening because I got all of that done in an evening. Um, it just felt so good. I've been stopping the whole, you know, following instructions and reading and keeping track of where you are. And um, that's just a hurdle at times for me. Um, and it just went so easily and it just worked. And it felt so good and it, it, it was just so much fun in the moment. I didn't, I knew I was making not really mistakes, but I was doing things that would lead it to be not as nicely finished as maybe I would like. But I've seen other knitters, um, some very well-known ones, that don't always have the best finishing work on their pieces, but they still love them and they wear them and they use them. And we've all made that mistake that we've continued through a project just because we didn't realize we'd made the mistake until halfway through. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go with it as of right now and see where it takes me. Cause it's the year of the sweater. It's the time to figure out how I wanna do these things and whether or not I'm gonna be somebody who who really digs into sweater surgery. I certainly liked that about crochet. A lot of people won't do, do crochet surgery, but I always did because I it made sense to me. It just seemed easy. Um, and why would you rip back 10 rows? Why would you rip back if you could just cut into that row and fix it? So, We'll see. And uh, that's my week. You know, let me know what's going on in your week. I love chatting. Cannot wait for my Bumblebee hat machine to come. And thank you for all the comments and support. Look with your heart first and have some good knitting. <laughs>